Oh, Nat 20. I'm Nat 20, and we're back with more of the Occult Chronicles and Clono, the Boxer Samurai, and he found a disturbing tapestry. Your attention is drawn to an old tapestry hanging on the wall that depicts a medieval battle of some sort. It looks like it should be in a museum. Examining the battle scene a little closer, you immediately notice the large red hand that divides two groups of armored knights. Suddenly, the battle seems to come to life. Knights charge the hand on both sides and are knocked to the ground. You stare at it in amazement, wondering if you are hallucinating. Your eyes widen in disbelief as the battle unfolds before you. A ghostly vapor seems to enshroud the tapestry. Resist the horror, the horror. You cannot resist. Your mind is weak. You struggle to maintain your sanity. Cursed artifacts give you the creeps. You remember the night that you spent in the Museum of the Miskatonic University. You still can't remember several days of that mission. So that's great. We've succeeded in that before, and it also references the night of the Museum of the Miskatonic University going well. If you succeed that one. Oh, my brain! The tapestry, of Ozzy, the tapestry is obviously animated by some type of sorcery. It might even be possessed by some malign spirit. I think that's... I think I finally figured out how to pronounce that. Go me. <laughs> you should proceed with caution. It isn't unheard of for something like this to function as a doorway or a portal to another dimension. Once you might not get back out. Once in, you might not get back out. There we go. Just leave the tapestry alone. No. There's an organ over here. You see before you a large and ornate Baroque pipe organ. The bench before it sits empty. Suddenly your ears are filled with haunting sounds of music resounding from an organ's pipes. The melody is terrifying and you watch astonished as the ghostly vapor encompasses the musical instrument. You struggle to keep your fears in check. The haunting music threatens to drown you in a sea of melancholy and despair. Something supernatural possesses this musical instrument and you must resist its efforts to chip away your sanity. Will we make it? Well, now the king there we won't shit. Oh no! We fail horribly. The music builds to a crescendo and you feel like you are being pulled down to your doom in a bottomless ocean of despair and pain. This thing wants to hurt you. God! We're almost insane again! Clono, oh no! Leave the pipe organ alone! Skip the second act and escape the falling chandelier! Oh no, this room is horrible! You hear the sound of straining metal above you and then a sudden crack. You look up and see a massive glass and metal chandelier falling directly towards you. Instinctively duck and roll or smart step aside, instinctively duck and roll without hesitation. You throw yourself into a crouching roll and tumble away to avoid the falling chandelier. No, the queen is gonna beat my page and the ten beats my six, but the queen beats that eight. I'm okay. Yeah, buddy. You spring forward and come up on one knee, free from the wreckage. That was a close one. Get some health. What I need is Sandy. I need Sandy like it's my job. Crossbow trap. You hear the twing looking to see crossbow bolt heading your way and aimed at your heart. We're going to combat roll out of the way of this one. Your battle instincts kick in and you drop to the floor and roll away. Roll away. You roll away. Darn, that would have been cool. Uh, I'm gonna drop the king, cause queen would still beat the page. Yeah, seems like the thing to do. And it was definitely a thing to do. I was only able to drop the king, drop to the floor, and avoid the lethal bolt by a lot. Get two expertise, a health, three health, and an aura of fortune to undo our ill omen from before. With that. We have four, and I think we're going to increase our swords, and probably at this point try to save up for a skill card to up our wands or pentacles, because now we're pretty beefy, but uh, it's like all we are. We're almost insane. And there's an old grandfather clock here. Your attention is drawn to a magnificent grandfather clock that dominates its section of the room. Constructed out of a rich mahogany, its exterior is decorated with ornate frisures and carvings. Its large brass pendulum hangs motionless but frozen oddly at a slight angle. You've had your fair share of encounters with possessed or cursed furniture, and you don't sense anything supernatural here. But there's something strange, however. An aura or energy of some sort is being hidden here. It is hard, though, not to be awestruck by the quality of craftsmanship that went into building the clock. 
perhaps it was meant as a distraction. Pursue it at another time. Alright, so outside knowledge from playing this before several times for recordings, if I remember correctly, we can talk to the pipe organ. I didn't check, I bailed out of there pretty quick, but I think we can talk to the pipe organ. And if we do successfully, he's like, hey, go check out the grandfather clock. And if we do so successfully, both of those successfully happening and then completing the quest are all things that could raise our sanity. Though it's a little risky, it's the only thing that is gonna raise our sanity for sure if we do it. We need to communicate with the spirit in here. Three draws, three tricks, four target. Any sanity loss will drive us insane. You seek to use your talents as a medium to contact the spirit inhabiting the pipe organ and, and divine what it is that binds it to this world. If you can figure out what is holding it from returning to the spirit world, you might be able to free it. This is a horrible draw. Oh, no. Oh, crap. You reach out with your mind and recoil at the enormity of pain that confronts you. The negative energy that has accumulated around this nexus is astounding. Its attack leaves you nearly unconscious and in great pain. Okay. I need to not draw sanity loss. There's one. Then go for the top left corner. No! And Clono's gone insane. Well. With the events happening as they did. With Bruno going insane five minutes into the last, what would have been the last episode. And Clono going insane five minutes into what would be this episode. I think that I'm probably just going to cut it to just be one episode shows Bruno's whole thing and then one episode shows Clono's whole thing and you'll have figured that out by now because this will be the end of the Clono episode and so what we'll do next I don't know but being a boxer is not working out for us what was working out for us We definitely need to be able to talk to people, but we also need to be able to fight, but we also need to be able to dodge. So I can push my pentacles as my lowest, have my wands and swords be my highest, and my cups be my mid, I guess, and then I'll check out what would make for the best uh, class and everything for that sort of build. It's disappointing, Clono had a, a katana and it was pretty cool. He never got to use it. Oh well, these things happen.